Kilo 404. Ready to drop a little video. Want to talk about um, Eddie Hearns devaluing and um, attempts to undermine the significance of Deontay Wilder's fight with Tyson Fury. Should that fight get off? Um, before I drop this video, I just want to say thank you for your viewership. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Once again, as I always say, I'm trying to build this channel and uh, really want to make it into a um, you know channel that's getting a lot of viewership, so I can uh, start having some you know start having some intelligent boxing conversations with um, other boxing fans like myself. Eventually, start doing some live streams. Because, uh, yeah, as I always say, it's not like you can just walk to the corner store and uh, have good conversations about boxing. I mean, even even in line at the post office or even at a sports bar. And I don't go to bars or anything, but um, I used to used to frequent them to shoot pool a lot back in the day. But even then, I remember, you know, the conversations were always about football, baseball, basketball. I, unless there was a Floyd Mayweather fight or... Before that, Oscar De La Hoya, Roy Jones, Mike Tyson, something like that. Guys weren't talking about boxing, so that's why I, that's why I'm on YouTube. You know, I spend a lot of my time on YouTube in the comment section, um, especially on live streams where I can have that uh, back and forth conversation, um, that banter, if you will, with other people who uh, have passion for the sport of boxing, like I do. With that said, uh, let me get into this video. Uh, Eddie's dropped, you know, during a lot of interviews, you know, Eddie's talked and talked and talked about how Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury first wasn't even going to happen. Fight wasn't real. It was just a publicity stunt, so forth and so on. Then he comes back a couple days later. He heard the fight's happening. He heard that um, Wilder's making this much money. He heard Fury's making this much money. And so forth and so on. And, uh, you know, but basically, he, he made remarks about, you know, why the fight shouldn't happen, so forth and so on. He's also made comments, you know, trying to devalue the fight. And, and, and of course, in the comment section, there's a lot of, lot of people um, talking down on the fight. You know, I've seen, seen a lot of videos from various people putting the fight down. Um, seen a lot, seen several videos, um, opposing videos actually big up in the fight as as something significant, which it really is. So I want to give my give my two cents on it, my take on it. You know, for for me, first of all, I, I really do think that right now that's the biggest fight in boxing that's that's made that's on the horizon. I'm not saying it's the biggest fight that can be made in boxing. I'm saying right now, from from this point on through 2018, it's probably the biggest fight that's gonna be made. Now, I think even um, you know, the the next biggest fight that's been that's on the horizon that's being talked about is uh Mikey versus uh Errol Spence, and then of course um you got the Triple G and Canelo rematch, which is right around the corner. I, I just don't see I, I don't see the videos out there. I don't I don't hear the buzz um, about that fight that just say for instance the original the first fight had. And and typically when you have two you know perceived great fighters that had a fight that went to a draw, there's huge anticipation for the rematch. Even even if one of the guys got knocked out or it was a wide decision or whatever, if it's two great fighters and people felt like the fight was close. You know, that would be huge, huge consideration and huge anticipation for that rematch taking place. And and I, I, I know Canelo had his, his uh, issues with uh, the uh, clenbuterol and everything that's surrounding that. But I don't think that's what's taken away from the luster of that fight. I think the, the talks about um, Wilder versus AJ is what stole the thunder for that fight long before the clenbuterol issues came up. And I think the anticipation for the A.J. Wilder fight 
is what's um basically what's still still in that thunder. And now that Wilder is actually fighting Tyson Fury, which is perceived as the next best fight that he can make in heavyweight division because he's already beat Luis Ortiz. Um, so, you know, with that being the next best fight that can be made, there's there, there's a lot of anticipation for what the outcome of that fight is going to be. People can talk all day about Tyson Fury being out of shape and coming on, on the road back and, and so forth and so on, but the reality is Fury's a live dog. Um, and, and I've said this before in other videos. I'll say it again. I think Tyson Fury is a good boxer. I think he has great footwork. I think he's awkward. He's good movement. You know, he's um, he's, he's intelligent in there. But I also felt originally when this fight was kicked around back in 2015, 16, whatever it was, after Fury got in the ring and challenged Wilder, but then went on to do other things, I still feel today, as I did then, that Fury... Um, that Fury is pretty much gonna do good work, but I don't think he could keep Wilder off of him. At some point, Wilder's gonna catch him, and eventually he's gonna take him out. I, I think, and I have always thought that this fight ends with Tyson Fury on his back. If he's not on his back, the corner of the ref is saving him. But either way, it, it does not win with Tyson with the uh, judges going to the scorecards. And it wins with Tyson Fury losing via knockout. That, that's always been my take. That I haven't wavered on that. Um, I haven't seen anything to this date that will make me think otherwise. And I'll go ahead and put it out there. I also feel the same way about the AJ Wilder fight. I think AJ. I think AJ gets out of, gets knocked out quicker than Tyson Fury because he doesn't have the footwork. He isn't as awkward. He, he's pretty much in my opinion, tailor-made for what Deontay Wilder does well. But but that's another video. I, I'm going to get off of that. Um, but as far as the magnitude of Tyson Fury versus Wilder, I, I think, you know, the fight's huge. It's huge over in the UK. It's huge in the US. It's huge for heavyweight boxing. It's huge for boxing in, in general. You know, when people talk about the biggest fight, I think people start thinking about... Uh, they, they confuse the biggest fight for the sport with the most lucrative fight. You know, Triple G Canelo very well may make more money than uh, Wilder versus Fury. Or Fury versus Wilder, if you will. That's not, that's not a bigger fight because he makes more money. If AJ fight versus Povetkin, which no one's talking about either, makes more money does more at the gate or whatever, that does not mean it was a bigger fight. The, the bottom line is, for me, what makes a fight big are the implications around that fight, what it does for that division, what it does for the sport, what it does as far as getting the conversations going, getting people energized and uh, injected with um, enthusiasm and anticipation and excitement about the sport of boxing or about a certain a certain division. I think the, I think the AJ Pavekin fight, people already feel like they know they know who's gonna win. But I think the only way that, that fight at once it's over gets a bunch of buzz would be if AJ got if AJ lost, whether it be via knockout or decision. If AJ lost, then that fight will be all, all, it will be a bunch of clamor about that fight. But I honestly don't feel like there's anything AJ could do to Povetkin. If, should he win the fight, there's nothing he could do that would make um, people be all excited about it. If AJ went in there and knocked him out in 10 seconds, I think people are going to feel like, hey, you know, he, he should do that. If, if you believe everything that's said about AJ and all the praise he gets from his followers, from his fans, from the commentators and the people who really, you know, talk him up and sell him as this, you know, this this great icon of boxing right now or, or whatever. You know, maybe icon is not the word, but whatever they're trying to sell him as and have sold him as, then he should do that. 
I don't think that's going to happen. But my point is, that, that could be like the best case scenario for him is he just went out there and just, just ice with Beck in the, in the first round. But I still don't think that, aside from his fans, the masses are going to be just terribly excited because that happened. Same thing, Triple G, Canelo. I don't think no matter, unless they just have like an epic Hagler Hearns type fight, um, people aren't going to be just, it's not going to be all the buzz, you know, about what happened in that fight. And, and I'll say one thing about the Triple G, Canelo fight for me that takes away from it is both of those guys seem very uninterested in fighting the other top guys in the middleweight division. So with them having so much hesitation to talk about the other guys or mention their names or even say that they're interested in challenging them, even with Triple G with guys being mandatory for his belt, he's already thrown pretty much vacated one belt, not to fight a guy. And uh, I know people say, that, well, he fought, um, he's fighting Canelo, so I don't blame him. No, but he had a chance to fight this guy instead of fighting Vonis Martirosian, who he should have been fighting. Um, so... For him to vacate one belt, I'd say that he, he's not interested in undisputed, so what stops him from vacating another belt and to keep from fighting the guy he should fight? My, my personal opinion is Triple G and Canelo have right now a four-fight plan. First fight went into a draw. Second fight, one of them has to win. Then, the, uh, of course, there could, all, there could also be um, interest in a third fight. And in the third fight, if the other guy wins, they're tied with a, and they have a draw. So there would be a selling point on a fourth fight as a tiebreaker, if you will. But I, I, only, I honestly think those guys are only interested in fighting one another right now. Yeah, I, I see Oscar talking about, you know, he make Canelo Spence right now. But I mean, it's, it's, it's foolhardy of him to even be talking about Canelo fighting anybody. Um, as a promoter to be promoting him against anyone else right now with the Canelo with a Triple G fight going on. Don't know what the outcome of that fight is going to be. It's not like uh, Triple G is a tune-up. It's not like Triple G is fighting the guy that Tyson Fury is fighting. Tyson Fury, for all intents and purposes, should win his fight this weekend coming up. And if he doesn't win that fight, if he doesn't look good in that fight, then it's, it's definitely going to make it hard to sell the Fury versus Wilder fight. Fury needs to go out there and look spectacular. Not necessarily spectacular, but he really needs to look good this weekend. It, it does, he doesn't need to look like he's in their plan. He needs to go in there and, and put hands on this guy and get him out of there. Because that helps sell the Wilder fight. Okay. I'll, I'll talk about the, the Mikey versus Spence fight. There are, are people who say, well, Mikey versus Spence, that, that's a bigger fight. Those guys are both uh, mentioned in, in a pound for pound conversation. My, my stance on that is, as far as the implications of a division, like how Wilder and Fury has huge implications on the heavyweight division, Spence versus Mikey is not a huge fight for any division. It's huge huge for the pound for pound discussion should Mikey win. Should Arrow win, it does nothing for his pound for pound status really. Um, because he's such a bigger fighter he's not he, he's a bigger fighter who's considered to be the best in his division which when you look at the last division, Mikey's campaigned at in divisions, he's um, consistently campaigned at. It's two divisions above. Arrow's two divisions above Mikey's current division, so he's expected to win that fight. You know, that's you know much like um, Floyd was expected to beat Juan Manuel Marquez. There, there was some. Um, there was some curiosity with how Floyd would look coming down those extra three pounds to 144, especially after a, a layoff, a, a short retirement. But Floyd took that right off the table when he didn't make the weight and basically they recontracted the weight at 147. So that 
once it, once the fight was at 147, I in my mind I was like, okay, Floyd's gonna gonna watch one man with Marquez. You know, whether it be a snooze fest or whether he stops him or whatever, I just felt like once once the weight was contracted at 147, I knew that that took all of the that took all of the um, curiosity out of. Him. Now now honestly, I felt like Floyd was gonna beat him regardless. But you just never know what uh, an extra three pounds um, does to a guy having to, you know, take that off of his frame. Especially a guy. Of course, I dropped my phone again like I do every other day. But especially a guy um, coming, you know, off of a layoff. So, you know, with that said, I mean, that, that fight went as it, as it was as expected to go. And I think Errol and Mikey fight going to go as expected to go. So, that the... The, the anticipation or the curiosity of what the outcome of a fight is isn't there for that fight. And then the outcome of the expected outcome does nothing for that division that the fight is taking place in. Nothing whatsoever. Arrow beat Mikey doesn't open up the middle of the um, welterweight division to get him more fights or it doesn't cause any movement in the division whatsoever. So to me, regardless of um, regardless of what type of revenue the fight does, it's not a bigger fight than Wilder and Fury's fight. Wilder and Fury's fight has huge implications on the heavyweight division. Has huge implications on boxing. You know these these guys are, are charismatic, fan friendly guys. That they have fan bases that, that that have discussions about boxing, who are charismatic about boxing, much like the, the fighters are. Um, that that it's really one of those things that is gonna, you know, it's gonna get things going. It's gonna get these conversations, gonna keep these conversations going about who's the best in every weight division, regardless of which guy wins, because the winner of this fight shouldn't be ignored by Eddie Hearn and AJ. You know, it, 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 it has all the attention and the buzz right now. Even Eddie talks about this fight more than he talks about his the zone, the zone app, more than he talks about AJ's fight, more than he talks about his other guys. Um, that This fight is, is big, or in Eddie's words, massive in the sport of boxing. Right now, there's not a bigger fight on the horizon. Period. And I mean, anywhere. This fight right now, the anticipation of this fight, the buzz of this fight, the impact of this fight is bigger than Canelo and Triple G. The thing about Canelo and Triple G, I'll say it again. No one knows has or has any idea what the winner does after that fight. For me, I think the, the what the winner does is fight the loser again in another fight. Because they're not interested in fighting the other guys, the other top guys in the division. And and of course, they, they want to make a certain pay, type of payday. So that's where that money is going to come from. Um, I just don't see the winner of that, that fight going into a fight with um, Charlo or a unification fight with the winner of uh, Billy Joe and Andre or even a unification fight with uh, Danny Jacobs, their take a winner. I just don't see it. So... That there you go still with the division stagnant that doesn't have to be. But on the other hand, the Wilder Fury winner, if they're not having a rematch, which I do hear some rumors about that, it could be a two-fight deal. But if there's no rematch, then quite naturally, unless unless they're fighting the mandatory, which um, seems to be Dominic Brazil, there's not for them they have to be going after the AJ fight aggressively 
and it's, and the winner will have momentum that AJ can't just come into the negotiation trying to big dog them to get out of the fight by saying, oh, I'm only going to give you this, I'm only going to give you that, because I don't think the fans are going to accept that. I think even the fans over in the UK should Wilder beat Fury are not going to just feel like, yeah, you can just yeah, just offer him a flat fee, this, that, and the other. That. I think they're going to have expectations that, hey, this guy just beat Fury, and, and you need to respect him. Or if Fury beats Wilder, all of a sudden he gets his fans back that AJ's been been, been borrowing. You know, those, those uh, Fairweather fans. If he beats Wilder, all of a sudden AJ loses a, a, a large percentage of his fans. So, again, when I hear the words big fight, I, I'm thinking about what are the implications of the fight. Not how much revenue the fight brings in. Not how much money each guy makes. Not how many belts on the line in the fight. It's what are the implications of the fight? What does it do for the sport of boxing? What does it do for his division that the fight takes place in? That, for me, is what makes the big fights. That is what tells me Wilder versus Fury is the biggest fight on the horizon in the sport of boxing. And if anyone feels otherwise or whether they agree with me, I'd like to hear from you in the comment section. And on that note, I'm out of here. Peace.